Hi guys, I'm Jerusha and you're watching Jerush Couture TV. So excited for the video today. This has been a highly sort of requested video it's ever since I got this bag. You can see in the title below that it is a review of my Chanel Le Boy bag. Ever since I got it, people have been asking me to review it and one of my thoughts on it especially around the time that it was just such a craze it's it still is a craze for the boy bag but just when it really hit its peak and I'm sorry I didn't get a review done then but I'm here now with it uh, first up on my nails I am back to my dare it nude from essence sorry I keep uh, I keep saying essie it's just you know essie essence s s s s it's just all similar. Uh, the Dare It Nude 162 that I was rocking a lot in past videos. I'm back to it. On my lips from Essence as well is number 11 in the nude. Uh, just obviously a straight nude colour. That's it. A little bit simple. I'm wearing my hat from Choice and a t-shirt from Tempt. That is it. We went for the black and white theme today. Very Chanel-esque. And I almost forgot to tell you that I'm drinking tea from my Tea Ford mug from L&M. It's actually tea in it. I don't usually have the substance to match the cup. I tend to always put coffee in this and put tea in my coffee comes first. I mix it up a lot. But it's tea today. English tea. Okay, oh my gosh, if you have not seen Inside Chanel, Inside Coco Chanel or Once Upon a Time uh, Chanel, I am going to link the YouTube that has all of the chapters of that uh, video inspired like documentary chapters of Inside Chanel. It tells the history of this woman, of her house, her clothing. Uh, design house that she created from scratch, her history of her life, her love affairs, her relationships, her friends and things like that. I am, I just love history. My husband and I, we watch a lot of documentaries together. We watch the History Channel together. Um, when he gets a night off, we just chill and watch that. We love stuff like that. These short videos are just, so, I get goosebumps when I'm watching them. They are so, not only is it amazing vocabulary, <laughs> like I watch them and I'm thinking, God, the voiceover, the narrator, that woman's voice is so amazing. The way she pronounces all those French words. I'm so Australian, I could never say things like that. But the names and the history of her, she was the most unbelievable woman. And it's not just because, you know, she's such an incredible fashion designer and I am a fashion designer and it's the fashion world and it's Chanel. It's not just that. It's it was her guts, it was her attitude, and she just, she differed from the rest. And I think that is just such a cool attribute to have in your personality. So if you get the time, please check out the link below. The reason I am telling you that, because this bag that I'm gonna to review today has obviously a lot of history behind it, and I'm gonna explain a bit of the history behind it. So, jumping into it, this is the box it came in. I purchased this Le Boy bag from Fashion File. It was my first Fashion File purchase, thus throwing me into becoming a Fashion File blogger, which I said in my uh, GST uh, unboxing that I do blog for Fashion File. I am purely affiliated with them. I have gotten to some... <laughs> some rants on Instagram with people saying that I'm pretty much fibbing to you guys and that I'm sponsored. A sponsorship for a YouTuber means that they're paid. Get your life. A fee. Such as, not just even YouTubers, bloggers, such as who? Uh, Wendy Lookbooks or her, the Barefoot Blonde and things like that. These girls are paid cash. They are walking to the bank they are like 10 grand a review and a free handbag, you know, 15 grand an appearance. That is sponsorship. When you see a YouTuber sponsored by companies, that's what it is. I don't have a fee. 
I, I'm not at a level where I can be like Michelle Phan, pay me, you know, 20 grand to review this Lancome mascara. It's not how it is. So I am simply affiliated with them. I get some sort of blogger discount. It's minor, honestly. It's not like they just give me bags for free or half off. It's not like that at all. And I truly believe in the company, so I talk about them at my own free will. So this was the first bag I got from them. This is the box that came in with the original Camellia. And it came with actually quite a lot. Actually, it came with everything. Pretty much as if you were buying it from the boutique. So dust bag was included. So booklet uh, with the white cloth down inside of it and the make, make and care card inside of it. And then it even came with all the original Chanel tissue and the Chanel satin ribbon down inside as well. So the listing actually came with a lot of things. And as I said in my unboxing of my GST, which is behind me, which, oh my God, I am on another level obsessed with. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I have just been like, I don't want to say this because it's really bad to say, but I've been like whoring my GST out on Instagram, like a hundred percent. It's everywhere. It's like every second post is my GST. So sorry about that. But I'm so obsessed with this bag. If you're a tote girl, that is what you should be getting. Let me know if you're interested in it in the comments below because, oh my God, I can't wait to review that bag. But sticking with the boy, uh, yeah, as I said in my unboxing of the GST, though, about Fashion File, if the listing doesn't have everything that this boy boy, this boy boy, this boy bag included that I just said, so the box, the dust bag, the cards, the ribbon, the authenticity card, if it didn't have that, that would not have stopped me from purchasing this bag. On to the review of this beautiful stunning Chanel Le Boy Bag. Chanel the Boy Bag. This is my absolute golden bag find 30th birthday present to myself hunt. I am so proud of this bag. I think when you buy pre-loved and you find what you're looking for, one. Two, if you find it in amazing condition. Three, if it's a nice sale, whether it be on eBay or through a consignment store, if it's just a nice transaction, you feel so proud of yourself. And I'm sure a lot of you can vouch for that out there. And I ended up getting it, which was so good because this exact design of the boy bag is not, it's because there's many, many variations of this bag, this actual style came out in 2012. So it's so rare to find one of these or not to find it. So I'm going to go through explaining what that means as well. Woo! It just got really hot in this room even though it's raining outside. So I had to just open this huge window here. So sorry about the outside noise if it comes in. So a little bit of history about this bag that I have known since I stalked it so much. You tend to learn all this history when you're stalking it and you're hunting for the items, you learn all about it or you read, you know, bloggers pages or articles and things like that. So, The Boy Collection was released in 2011 by Karl Lagerfeld and his team and it was a, not a reinterpretation, but a new collection based on and in honour of Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel, as Karl Lagerfeld said, character, which you'll see in those documentaries below, was very tough. She was very strong and she had a boyish attitude and a boyish kind of quality to her. Hence the reason when he designed this style, he based this style of bag on a hunting cartridge bag. So very clean, sleek lines, heavy hardware but very masculine, sorry, I'm getting rained on, very masculine in its appearance. So not as sort of pretty, I guess, as the 255 bag, that's a little bit, or the reissue, which is a little bit more pretty, more of a woman's sort of 
you know, going out or evening bag, especially back in those days when she designed it. He's come back in and designed this very slick, clean, kind of very, um, I remember when I first saw it and I saw the Ruthium hardware and I thought, it is so edgy, it's almost too edgy, you know, it's like, it's just so neat and, and clean and, and it's precise and I just, I really love that and that's what everybody who wants or has collected a boy bag, they fell in love with this kind of design as well. So that is what he based it around and he also based it around her, which you'll see in the documentaries below, her beautiful love affair, which was her first real true love of her life, boy Capel, who actually, like, he didn't start, but I think he was a big part of funding uh, 31 Rue Cambon, which was her main boutique in Paris. And, yeah, and then he tragically died in a car accident, and she never got over it. And so this was also named after him as well. So the boy bag after boy Capel and her boyish attitude. So that's a little bit of the history as to what Karl Lagerfeld was going through or what it's written that he went through um, in designing it with his team. It is the old medium size. So they've really, <laughs> this is the most like ever uh, it's a chameleon bag. Every season, every different season, they change this bag. They change the leathers. They change the layout. It can come in caviar, calfskin, lambskin. It can come in croc, python, like all these different. You can look them up. Like it's just insane. All the different types of um, fabrics, materials, and uh, styles that the bag, the boy bag, comes in. But this is the old medium size, uh, in the old medium size in that collection. And then they came out with the new medium size, which is more of the size of a jumbo. Like it's like 12 inch, it's a bit bigger and a bit taller. And then there's the large, which is really, really quite large. It's more like a pager bag, actually. It kind of looks a bit like a laptop bag, in my opinion. No offense, but it's just a little bit too big. It's really kind of more of a pager bag um, and then there's a small which is so adorable it's like this tiny and it's 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 absolutely so cute as well so they are the sizes up close you can see that mine is the large double stitch quilting so by double stitch it means that there's ridging here in the leather and then a thicker stitch to make the quilting the actual quilts a large because there is one, two, three, four, five across or two halves and three. Then the newer models and I did show a pic in this unboxing that the newer models have like eight squares across and they're a lot smaller. I think I saw it on a fashion blogger actually. Yeah I did. I saw it on a fashion blogger and I knew that I wanted this style so I obviously went on a complete hunt for these larger double stitched quilts. This bag is made in full calf skin leather in the black. The calf skin is supposedly said to be more durable than lamb skin. I have uh, a vintage lamb skin as well and you know what to be honest I don't really vouch for that. <laughs> I kind of I think it's a little bit more durable maybe on the front but on the inside not really or maybe that's just because I have gels I have gel nails and I scratch it a lot and I scratch with my ring and stuff like that but I don't I'm not quite sure about that that's completely a personal preference obviously the caviar in this bag is so gorgeous and it's much more durable uh, I, I love this bag in the caviar uh, the layout of it is just uh, one flap like so I will show you the hardware up close the flap opens, I have the felt on the front of it. Just a one flap, one pocket layout. There is no other pockets, there's no signature Chanel pocket on the back. The half moon shape is not there. He really modernized the design by taking that off, I think. And then the sides have kind of an open gusset there and then have the deep, the deep sort of three, two and a half inch depth to the bag there. The bag's measurements is 10 inch across, 
it's four and a half inch high and as I just said it's two and a half inch in depth which gives it really nice room inside it's actually really quite deep as compared to the double flap it's not as deep as this bag going over the features of this bag it is as I said car full calf skin leather with silver ruthium hardware this hardware is just to die for and it makes it look almost antique almost like it's been acid washed type silver hardware um, just a beautiful beautiful finish finish to this hardware and it is so weighty if you ever have a chance to go into a boutique if you've never held a boy bag to feel the weight in these chains I suggest you do so the hardware of the chain up close looks like so it is a beautiful wet the weight as I said of this chain is just gorgeous it's a beautiful curved chain in the ruthium hardware the most comfortable design thing about the design of the boy is the leather break on the shoulder I think a lot of people say about uh, flat bags classic flat bags that it's all chain uh, and woven leather so it can hurt your shoulder when your bags heavy well the boy bag has a break in it this break measures perfectly over the shoulder and it has an two adjustments two adjustment buttons there which go through splits and they have CC logos actually engraved in them then the rings on the side of boy bags are just beautiful again with the ruthium hardware so strong and sturdy and if I get the light right you can see the engraving of Chanel just printed on the side there nice and sleek and simple and on the other end as well the Mademoiselle lock this is not the turn lock but this is their new style you push in the sides and it unlocks like so so if I push in the sides when it's not locked you can see the two points closing and shutting and then just locking back this lock is absolutely gorgeous it is so sturdy and strong when you touch it and lock it you will just feel what I mean it's just the way it slides in and out on the button is so beautiful and well made opening it up the interior of the bag as I said the layout is one flap that is it this flap is really really substantial and actually quite heavy uh, not like the flat bags it just flips up it's really weighty there's a lot of leather in this flap but as you can see by what I meant, my nails tend to scratch the interior of this. That's what I meant by, I wouldn't say calf is that durable, but yeah. So that's the interior of the flap. The interior of the hardware buckle just has the four screws on either side, no engraving. Inside of the bag looks like so. Now there's different colored interiors. The new ones are black. This year that I got my, the year of my, my model is the gray. It's a gray drill. You can see it there. Sorry, it's a bit hard to show. And it's quite spacious, as I said, because of the depth of this bag. You can see that it has one slip pocket here with no zipper. That is the old medium. The new medium does have a zipper. So I just can slip paper in there if I want. And then there is my hologram uh, sticker tag down here that you can see. So here is the tag. It says Chanel made in Italy down inside there. So that is the physical overview of this beautiful bag. Pros and cons to this bag, obviously the absolute massive pros is the style of the bag, the beautiful edginess of the bag, a different kind of direction for Chanel which I think is just gorgeous and just that hunt for the bag, it was just that is the biggest pro I feel like I'm so proud of myself when I wear this bag and I got this bag a big pro to the bag is the comfortable setup of the strap like I said having the leather brake on your shoulder 
being able to wear it on your shoulder. It does fit crossbody. It's not very long. I will show you in my uh, modeling shots, but I wear it. I don't care that it comes just under my breast there. I like that and it's easy to get in and out of. Uh, so that's definitely a pro. That strap is very comfortable. When you're wanting to downsize, that is a pro as well because it's actually very user friendly for downsizing because it is one flap. There's no double flap you have to contend with and as I said, the depth of the bag helps you pack it very nicely as a downsize bag. I will say though, a con is that I do have a double flap vintage Chanel in the medium size and they're very, very comparable. I am going to show you them next to each other in a second, but that would be probably a con for me mainly because it's very similar and you really do have to downsize to use these bags. And let me show it to you in comparison to my beautiful <laughs> vintage double flap Chanel which I got as well pre-loved so these are the two beauties next to each other as you can see very very similar the same length obviously 10 inch uh, but very very similar in size hence the reason I say my use is lower on the double flap because I use the boy more because it's more user friendly with its straps and with what it fits and when I say what it fits, this is the reason why. So you look at the depth on the boy, as I said, there. And then you look at the depth on the double flap. It is just uncomparable. They fit so much more in the boy bag. And because the gusset shows through to the flap, it doesn't block it. it can, you can stack your bag up quite high. Whereas with the double flap, your double flap A is stopping it. But then even the flap here continues right up. So there's a lot more room in a boy than there is in a medium flap bag. And it's all double flap now. So to finish off, just quickly to show you what fits inside of it. I bought this witchery pouch in patent leather just to use for my boy bag only because my mini pochette doesn't fit. It's too thick. Here is one clay. Here is another clay. Down inside. Here is my multicolor card case. I get so many emails about these multicolor items. And that is them down inside. Let's move that. Here is my iPhone 6 and putting slipping that in the slip pocket, which is at the back, which you can see there. That fits nicely. So that is those items in my bag. I don't have my keys, but I guess they would rest on top. Sorry, let me show you that again. So here is my uh, key case with my keys down inside and my car keys. So slotting that on top. This is actually exactly how I would pack this bag. So, sorry, my dragon straps are falling out. Um, but this is how I would exactly pack this bag. So keys on top, phone in the back slip pocket, lots of clays, card case, and my little cosmetic pouch uh, from Witchery in the back. And then it just does up nicely. And I would probably either keep my sunnies on my head or keep them in my car. But that is packed. And that is my review on my Chanel Le Boy bag. I do hope you enjoyed that. Please, please, if you have time, check out the channel below with all of the chapters on Inside Coco Chanel. Truthfully, I, I urge you just do it. If you have a spare half an hour, just sit and watch all of the chapters. It is so interesting. I love history. Obviously, I love fashion history uh, too, but I do love all sorts of history, but I just think it is phenomenal. She is a phenomenal woman. Uh, Karl Lagerfeld is an amazing, amazing designer, and the house is just it's perfection and everybody and anybody knows that so if you have time do check them out but yes thank you so much for taking the time to watch this review guys please give it a thumbs up if you like it give it a thumbs up if you like Chanel and I'll be seeing you in my next video take care peace oh,